Hey everybody, so today is going to be a long, long awaited perfume video. I haven't been filming perfume videos for a little bit, uh, mostly because I haven't been doing as much with perfume. I have a couple of new additions to my little perfume collection, not, not so little perfume collection. Uh, but the thing is, I haven't really been doing my sort of three weeks to four weeks long uh, perfume rotations, which is normally how I use my perfumes, and I do want to get back to it. But for the summer, I kind of had all my summer perfumes out, like the most summery summer perfumes out, and I've been sort of focusing on using those, uh, which is what I've decided to show you today, the perfumes that I pulled out of my perfume collection for the summer and have been using during the summer. Maybe you'll find some useful recommendations. This is not going to be individual perfume reviews as I plan to film those later for sure separately. Um, and I have, I have thoughts about all of them, but uh, let's get into it. So this is my spring slash summer perfume that you've seen in my collection before. I love it. This is Parfum d'été by um, Kenzo. I do like Kenzo Perfume House. I think they're highly underrated because they do make interesting perfumes. There were recent couple of releases were sort of lackluster, especially in the uh, um, Fleur d'Air or Flower L'Air, something like that. The, the, the Flower Air, the newest flowers that they came out with um, were a little bit boring uh, in the little stubby short bottles, but uh, they also came up with some uh, interesting releases recently as well and I do plan on purchasing a couple of them. This is an old-time favorite. This is very fresh, very watery, uh, kind of aquatic floral and it's one of my all-time loves. I, I believe I have a separate review already on my channel for this fragrance, so I do want you to search for it and see, <laughs> see, see a more in-depth review about it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's watery floral, but not watery in concentration. It's watery because it, it's aquatic, and just it's a joyful fragrance. I really love this one, and I love it for spring, and actually I love it for summer as well, so this is my second bottle of it absolutely love it. Next we have a couple of trial sizes. I'm testing out the Clean Reserve line and I have two sort of small sizes of a Clean Reserve, the Citron Fig, uh, Lemon Fig scent that I think is really decent and the Sal Santal which I'm not so sure is a summery fragrance. I will do separate reviews on both of those as well. This is a very grown up, mature and very unisex. I do recommend men try this scent, the Sal Santal, Salt Santal. Very nice quality scent. I was surprised that that came out of Clean Line. I don't normally like clean fragrances. Uh, clean isn't the brand, clean. <laughs> and I, I just don't think they're very interesting, but the Reserve Line is uh, actually worthwhile. This is a totally qualitatively different approach. Uh, to clean fragrances. So clean does very different lines. They do their like, mainstream stuff that is boring to me. Um, and they do this reserve line, which has a lot more points of interest. And the Citron Fig, which is a um, uh, lemon fig scent, is actually quite authentic. Uh, I, will be, I will be doing separate reviews on those, but I just wanted to let you know that these I have been using for sure. Uh, then we have old favorites, obviously. Every summer I pull out my Chanel 19, the classic. I like the Poudre, but the Poudre uh, scent is actually much better, I think, for spring and fall. For me, it's much of a fall scent. I think it's a little bit too makeup y and powdery for specifically for summer. But this green, green beauty, mossy gorgeousness that is number 19. I don't remember if I've spoken about it separately, but if I, I'll search my channel and see because it's been a couple of years since I've been filming these videos. Uh, this is my second bottle of this one as well. Uh, and I will definitely, if I haven't filmed a separate review on this one, I, it is coming, but I have a feeling I've, I've done this already. It's a fantastic, magical, bitter green scent. Very, very feminine, very mossy. Uh, there's a lot of cheaper quality to it. Uh, and I do recommend you smell it if you like unconventional approach to a feminine fragrance. This is a powerhouse. It's, it's powerful. It's good sillage. It's very interesting. It is a fragrance of its own. Then we have um, a lightweight, very nice green 
uh, easy to wear scent. So this is not a challenge. 19 can be a challenge if you are not into that kind of fragrances. You really have to develop a taste for 19. I don't think it's an easy, necessarily a very immediate, immediately gratifying pick. However, Aqua Allegoria from Guerlain Limon Verde, um, Green Lemon, that one is an easy, easy bitter fragrance to like. It's a green, green, grassy scent. There's a lot of grassiness to it. There is some citrus uh, lurking about, and it's definitely, uh, it's definitely limey. So, lemon, I don't know, but lime, more, more of a lime speed, I think here. And it's it's fresh. It's super clean. It's very refreshing in the summer heat, especially if you're in a muggy environment. Then the thought of wearing perfume in general is just like, oh, I can't. This is gonna suffocate me. Not this little guy. This little guy is a very very fresh scent. Um, it's a fairly recent purchase. This still is within their core line, so you can find it fairly easily in most boutiques and definitely online. So if you if you want something super fresh and not challenging, I think Limon Vert from the Aqua Allegoria line from Guerlain is the way to go. Then we have the good old favorite. I used to have a small bottle of this and I don't know what happened in my brain, but I bought a 200 ml. This is not my favorite fragrance. This is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue and it is an iconic fragrance. Really, really, this is a uh, other toilet that is, you know, spanning decades at this point. It has floral, um, a floral flair, uh, and it definitely is uh, citrus and white, clean wood-based fragrance, and it's very pleasant. It's easy to wear. This one is a no-brainer. I don't think it's particularly fascinating or interesting. It's it's a wearable scent, uh, and wearable in a good way, obviously, because I think you can get away with wearing this very frequently and often, and I think it even would work in winter. It's very versatile. And as you can see, something possessed me to invest into this huge bottle, which is going to last me a lifetime. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's a worthwhile try if you're not a perfumista, if you just, you're not a perfumista and you're really searching for something easy, summery, very versatile, and easy to wear with a slight powdery tinge to it. I think the light blue is a, a good choice. It's not the most interesting choice and it's not my favorite, but uh, I do have a huge bottle of it. So I, I will definitely be using it for sure. And in the same category is Aqua, uh, Aqua de Gioia, sorry, Aqua de Gioia from Giorgio Armani. This is also a, a classic, it's a favorite. There's a lot of sugariness to this very citrusy pick. It's very fresh, but very girly at the same time. If you're into citrusy, fresh girliness, this is kind of a base to a mojito without the mint. So that's what mojito smells like before you add the crushed mint, which obviously would change things a lot. But if you smell this sort of sugary, lemony water, this is what, if, if that's what you like, if that's the scent you're into, this is really good. And I think this is a very, very easy uh, pick as well and universally it's very well liked people don't tend to hate this fragrance um, It's a, also a very good gift I think this over the Dolce & Gabbana light blue would make a really great summary gift because this is impossible to hate You can be sort of lackluster about it and sort of like hey, it's a scent whatever But you can't really hate it very easily some people obviously have sensitivities and headaches and whatever That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying this scent is universally likable scent so um, safer in terms of gift giving for perfumes. So uh, I put Joya from Giorgio Armani, I think is a good find as well for that very reason, because it is in fact very easy to wear. Uh, then we have slightly more um, interesting picks. This is a scent from uh, Atelier Cologne, and I have a, its own little case for it over here. This is a travel size, as you can see. Uh, very, very pretty. It's, I think it's like orange pomelo. Unfortunately, when you get these refillable flacons, you really don't get to uh, get the name on it. And I should really prepare it a little bit better, but it's one of their orange sanguine that It's the orange sanguine scent. Again, another citrus, but that's what you want for the summer. You want something zingy, you want something not too sweet, you want something uplifting. So I find myself going either for very green fragrances or watery fragrances or citrus-based fragrances. 
Um, so Orange Sangreen is a really good one. I haven't been wearing it enough to do a full review quite yet, but I mean like I have 30 mils I believe here, like a good amount. So soon enough I will be talking about it in more detail. And the last one I wanted to mention is a very, very new pick. This is something I purchased very, very recently. And this, as you can see from the packaging, is from the Elizabeth and James collection. And this is a French gray. There is amethyst, and I was really debating between amethyst and French gray, and finally I went for French gray. And I'm not sorry that I did. This is not a popular Elizabeth and James scent. First of all, let's just appreciate the detail in the packaging, very art deco, very cool. Um, actually not uncomfortable to hold and with my medium-sized hands I can really easily spray it. So I think they thought the packaging through very nicely. It's my speed. I love simple packaging but this is quite interesting and I still do like it. And uh, I've been using it for maybe about a week now. I obviously haven't used it enough to form an opinion and film a review on it quite yet so await this. Uh, this will happen but it won't happen soon because this is actually very simply constructed scent but this is not a simple scent uh, and this is also not a scent that everybody's going to love so i would highly highly suggest that you go and smell it uh, yourself try try and test it out before you purchase but if you do love this kind of a scent this is going to be such a fantastic pick for you this is a gorgeous musk musk that is heavily heavily based on bitter neroli and uh, also a bit of lavender powderiness so there's a, this very 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 thin delicate layer of powder that is present in the scent and a lot of it is musk that then goes into the skin scent these kinds of guys are difficult to formulate um, like i said i still haven't completely formed a very solid opinion about it but if you like very, very fresh unisex almost musks, I think this is a unisex scent to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's marketed as women's scent, but as you can see, this is all very much a spectrum and it is all very much a question of whether the scent fits your personality and purpose. Uh, but I think this is a very safe unisex sense, uh, scent. If you smelled it on a man, you wouldn't be surprised and you would be like, oh, is it unisex or is it male? um targeted scent no you would be you would just accept it as as is as a really great well so far i think it's good but i i haven't sometimes my opinions change as, as i wear into the fragrance and, and we kind of meld together over time uh, but i think for men this would be actually a fantastic pick so i'm a little bit surprised it's marketed towards women obviously i wear unisex scents often i have a variety a whole sort of spectrum of scents anywhere from something really, really girly to something really, really what is considered to be masculine, you know, from sweet to bitter. I like it all. I just require good quality. That's all I ask for in a fragrance. Um, and then, then it's a question of taste. What do you like? This is very interesting though, and it wears on me into a very beautiful musky skin scent. Um, so I will definitely talk about this one further. I did spend a lot of time in this video talking about it, but it's only because I do feel like it is interesting and, and it's a new approach, um, newer approach to uh, constructing that kind of a musk scent. And it's very fresh, therefore it's summer. That's it for today. I hope it was fun for you to um, go ahead and look into my little collection of summer fragrances, which I'm currently using. I have more obviously, but um, these are the ones that I've really pulled out and uh, invested time into um, in, into really getting to know these scents all over again. So I'm very, very happy with my picks. And let me know if you know any of these fragrances, if you use any of these fragrances. And also I, I, I ask you to let me know what is your favorite summer fragrance? What do you think is a, the ultimate beautiful summer scent? to ever have existed. I'm very curious what you might say to me. So far for me, if I had to pick two, it would be the Parfum d'été from Kenzo and number 19 from Chanel. These would be the ones that I would probably say are my favorite summer scents thus far, but it's all, obviously all a question of time and things change over time and they weren't always my favorites. That's it for today, guys. Have a good day, have fun and enjoy your summer fragrances. Uh, see you later, bye-bye.